is our last message in this series on, on the holiness of God. You know, in part one of this series on the holiness of God, we began with, with our focus on God as, as being a holy God. And we talked about the fact that God's core nature is holiness. In part two of this message, we considered the fact that God in heaven is worshipped by this one aspect, holiness. He's, he's worshipped as holy, holy, holy. So we said that the only way we can ever approach such a holy God is through the atonement. So in part three of this series, we then discussed on His holiness in me. How does God go about reproducing that holiness? Because the power of sin has been broken. So this is going to be natural so to speak, for you and me to walk in holiness. Part four of perfecting holiness. How does God enable us to perfect holiness? You all remember that? Yes? No? Maybe? <laughs> the good thing is all these messages are available on our church website, so you can just go back and listen to it over and over again. Let it soak into you, settle in your heart. So today, uh, we're going to talk about the beauty of holiness. Uh, there are certain descriptors that I use in the Bible uh, th that use our language to describe something about God. For holiness of God. Let's look at some scriptures. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. That word glory is a Hebrew word hadar, which is also translated as beauty. Let your beauty appear to your children. And the word hadar refers to God's Splendor, His magnificence, His honor, His excellency that is possessed by God. And then in verse 17, He says, Let the beauty of the Lord be upon us. It's a different word, Naom, which talks about the delightfulness, the pleasantness. Another thought about the holiness of God is this. The Bible tells us in several places, and I'll make mention of a few. First Chronicles 16 and verse 29, it says, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Again, Psalm 29 of verse 2, it says, you know, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 96 verse 9, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That true worship can only take place in holiness. And the holiness that you and I are talking about is not holiness that we have earned. Like we've stated earlier, God himself imparts to us the righteousness and the holiness in which and out of which we worship him. Second Chronicles 20. In verse 21, it says here, when he had consulted the people, the king, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. David put it like this in Psalm 27, verse 4. He says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. In Isaiah 57, verse 15, and God says, I dwell in the high and holy place. I am in this high place that is inaccessible, in this holy place that is so sacred, unapproachable, with the person who is of a contrite and humble heart. So when you and I walk with brokenness and humility, we actually get to dwell with God. In how holiness and how you and I relate to that is in Psalm 110 verses 1 to 3. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. In the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Now, this passage is speaking prophetically or a word in advance about Christ's millennial reign on the earth, his rule and reign on the earth, that many things that I've spoken about Zion is spiritually fulfilled first in the church. That holiness is actually an expression of our anticipation of his return. First John chapter 3 verses 2 and 3, Beloved, now are we children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is. 